before the day of Ashen Skies, Aelantir was said to be ruled by the mighty Precursor Empire, in which immortal elves with vast magical capabilities lived in floating cities, unopposed by any other civilization. Dukaniel, a famous general from the war against the dwarves, was granted Delair as his fief for his services. After kidnapping the Elfen Bride, the Emperor's only child, a civil war broke out between the Empire and Dukaniel's followers. Dukaniel was defeated, and Delair turned into a frozen wasteland as punishment. However, that was not the end of it. Dukaniel was imprisoned in the floating capital, and from here he started an evil ritual which caused the destruction of the Empire and created what we now know as the Ruined Sea. Most elves died. Those who were able to leave became what we now know as Moon and Sun Elves in Halkan, drifting on the Remnant fleet for a thousand years before finally arriving in Kanor and Bulwar, turning the tide against the Sorcerer King and freeing the oppressed humans from the Gnolls, respectively. However, these were not the only survivors of the Ruin. Many elves were able to survive the blast thanks to vaults, mountains and other factors, but none remained the same. Their lifespan became the same as humans, and they all gained various mutations, ranging from bat noses, to being influenced by the seasons, to a bright blue skin, and even some growing beards. In the north, the Tierra and their cousins were able to survive the blast thanks to making it to a vault somewhere north of the Dallaire Wastes. Most migrated south into the Ruined Circle, becoming the Boek, Cheshoshi, and Quina tribes. Further west, we find the Yin River Valley. These people also survived thanks to making it to vaults, going on to migrate out and found the mighty Yinnick Empire, built upon feudalism and the Yinnick Knights, who ride great antler horses. In 1205, this empire collapsed due to civil war, and now petty fiefdoms strive to reunite the empire. Amongst many of the claimants is Malachnar, where a warrior society has taken root, whose leaders are chosen from amongst the city's strongest warriors. Expect to see this battle king leading his army from the front, as is Malachnar's tradition. In Eodand, the elves survived thanks to the protection of the Fey Realm, which is deeply connected to the material plane here. The elves here worship the Four Seasons, and each take on various aspects of those seasons, in both appearance and culture and each seeks to proclaim themselves the dominant one, while the Eordelan worshippers stand out as aiming to unite all four seasons as one, and have closer ties to the Fae. Further south, in Alekand, the elves were mostly shielded from the effects of the ruin, thanks to their distance from the epicenter. However, the explosion reverted into itself, and caused a powerful shockwave that spread throughout the entire continent, splitting off Alekand from the mainland, and turning it into an island. With the earthquakes, floods, and other catastrophic events happening, the elves of Alakand retreated into the seven great prison cities of Arpedifer, Otakeon, Kimanis, Degakeon, Ormam, Kirka, and Lokmeon. As these cities held powerful wards, which became essential when the Death Winds came. The Death Winds were a sandstorm blown from the desert to the north of the island, carrying with it blue sands which would cause extremely cancerous growths on the body, and cause permanent damage to all those touched by it. Prolonged exposure would kill a healthy person in a matter of days. The Death Winds would subside over time, and the seven great cities would become the main powers in the region, eventually settling the lands around them, and beginning to recolonize the lands across the Cleaved Sea. These colonies were named Nicaeus, and a group of them attempted to unify into a single kingdom. The Keons back on Alakand were not fond of this idea, and stamped down on this monarchist sentiment. The instigators fled east, and founded the state of Amaean. Now Amaean looks even further east, to the prosperous lands of Taechend, and has the downfall of the mighty Empire of Larankar in its sights. Inroads have already been made, and territory claimed in the south of Taechend, but more drastic measures must be taken to ensure the rule of the Kianai be ascendant in this region. Welcome to the third Anbanar multiplayer season. This time we'll be using the Lambanar mod, created specifically with multiplayer in mind. It includes extra idea groups, more monuments, and a wealth of balance changes to make the game as fair as it can be. This season, I'll be taking on the nation of Amaean. We expect to see some player colonizers like Vanale, 
the Vanbury Guild and the Jahirian Exemplars test us, so we must ensure that we are as strong as possible with a powerful naval force before they show up. Hopefully, our fellow Ruinborn in Eordand, Malaknar, and Boek can also hold off these outsiders, and Aelantir can be held by those who did not flee. I hope you will enjoy the series. It promises to be a good one.